Hey y'all, welcome back to Coding with Minmer. On today's agenda, we're gonna tackle leak code problem 162, find peak element. After that, we'll cover an actual variant of the original question that Meta asks. They pretty much ask it every time, so this is a very important one to cover. Let's get started. Okay, so reading the problem statement here, we're given a vector called nums, and I have an example down here. These are gonna be the indices for it, and these are gonna be the values here. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove them from the visual just to make it a little bit easier to read. And our goal is to find the peak element, and we wanna return its index. What is a peak element? Well, they define it here as an element that is strictly greater than its neighbors. So in our example, we can see there's a peak here. It is greater than this neighbor and greater than this neighbor. So we would go ahead and return the index four. So I know what you're thinking. Shouldn't this be a three minute video? We could just iterate left to right in linear time. And we could have an if statement to check if every single one of these elements is a peak. I'm sad to say, however, meta requires log n time complexity. And actually, so does leak code. This means we have to use binary search to achieve the desired runtime performance. This is a very tricky question, and you end up having to derive the binary search solution from asking very specific clarifying questions because Meta won't give you any of these constraints. These are the questions that you need to ask. Does each value in the vector only have unique values neighboring it? The answer is yes. Are we given at least one element in the vector? Yep. Are there multiple peaks in the vector? There can be. Are we guaranteed at least one peak in the vector? Yes. And lastly, are the edges of our vector negative infinity? Yes. Unless you're a genius who knows the right questions to ask right off the bat, you'll have to have seen this problem beforehand. But we can rest knowing that there aren't many other leak code questions they ask that are this obscure. Okay, let's go over our example with these requirements in mind. We'll initialize our two pointers, left and right. M is gonna be at index two on the first iteration. That's just cause the left plus the right pointer equals five. We divide it by two. It gives us 2.5, but we're actually gonna go ahead and just round to two because we're using integer division. On each iteration, we're gonna check and see if we're at a peak element. Here, clearly not. Though our current value is higher than its right neighbor, it is not higher than its left. How do we know which direction we need to move in our binary search in order to get our peak element? Do we move to the left or do we move to the right? Turns out we have to move in the direction where the neighboring element is greater than our current value. Here it is. Why do we do this? Well, it makes logical sense that we would have the best chance of finding a peak element if we check for the peak at a higher value. So let's go ahead and adjust our pointers accordingly. Our right pointer is now going to be at m minus one, which is index one. This means that we no longer consider any of these elements to be the peak. Yes, I know we are skipping over this peak element. There can be multiple peaks given to us, but we are going to follow our logic of going towards the direction of higher valued elements. Trust in the process, it will all work out. L is gonna stay at index zero, and we calculate M to also be at index zero. Are we at a peak element? Yes, because it is higher than its right neighbor, but it's also higher than its left. I know this may sound confusing because there's literally no element to the left of it, but recall a requirement that we established earlier. Anything that is outside of our vector is actually at negative infinity. Same goes for the right side. Therefore, this is a peak element, 
So we're gonna go ahead and return its index zero. In code, you'll see we'll make a check that if we're at index zero, then we know for sure our current value is gonna be higher than its left neighbor negative infinity. Let's quickly look at another example. Let's go ahead and initialize our pointers first. M is going to be at index 2 this time. And on the first iteration of our binary search, where do we go? Do we go to the left or do we go to the right? We actually can't tell because the neighboring elements of this are actually duplicate values. Remember a requirement we clarified. The neighboring values of a given value have to be unique. Additionally, we're guaranteed at least one peak element. In this vector here, there are none. Therefore, we can relax knowing it's impossible to be given a vector like this. All right, let's put all of this together in one last example. Okay, let's start by initializing our pointers, left here, right here, and we're gonna calculate to be at index four. So now we're gonna take a look at this value. Is it higher than its right neighbor? In this case, it's not. So we're gonna have to go ahead and adjust our pointers accordingly. Looking at it, we could have gone either direction because both of the neighboring elements are actually higher. But in this case, we just end up going to the right because we make an if statement to check the right neighbor first. Again, it's arbitrary. That's just how we chose to do it. Now, on the second iteration, L is going to be moved to M plus 1. The right pointer is going to stay the same, and M's calculated to be index 6. Since we've moved our pointers, none of these values are in consideration for being a peak element. So now we take a look at the element at index 6. Is this a peak element? It is higher than its right neighbor. However, it is not higher than its left. This means we need to adjust our pointers again. On this third and final iteration, R will be moved to M minus 1. L will remain where it was and m is computed to be at index 5. Since we moved our pointers, let's go ahead and cross out what is no longer eligible to be a peak. We check where m is. Is this a peak? Yep, it's greater than both of our neighbors, so we're going to go ahead and return index 5 as the answer. The time complexity is going to be log n, and the space complexity is big O1. Let's go ahead and take a look at the code. Just like we did in our walkthrough, let's go ahead and initialize our pointers. We'll initialize left first. Now let's initialize the right. We will enter our while loop and start the binary search. On a given iteration, we'll want to compute the middle index. Then we'll always check if we're at a peak element. To do this, let's check if the right neighbor is lower than our current value. If we're at the last index, then we're guaranteed the current value is greater than the negative infinity to the right. Otherwise, we have an actual right element that we can use to compare with. Now we're gonna go ahead and make the same check for the left neighbor as well. If both of these conditionals are true, then we're going to return the index with mid. After, if we didn't find a peak, we should go to the right only if the neighbor's value is higher than our current value. This just means we're going to adjust the left pointer to m plus 1. If not, then we're going to go to the left and adjust the right pointer to be at m minus 1. We're guaranteed an answer, so remember, we'll always return on this line. However, we do have to return something because of compiler checks. We'll just return a dummy negative 1, but know that it's unreachable code. And with that, let's go on to the variant. Like I said earlier, this variant is usually asked more often than the original leak code question. It's basically the opposite of the problem before, that instead of finding the index of a peak element, we now want to find the index of a valley element, where its value is strictly less than its neighbor. 
That's the key word here, less. To accommodate for this change, we reverse our logic. Instead of having negative infinity outside of our given vector nums, we now have a positive infinity. Let's go through a workflow and see what else changes. We still initialize our two pointers, L and R, and M will be calculated to be at index two. Now we check, is this a valley? No, it is not. Although our current value is lower than its left neighbor, it is not lower than its right. Now that we establish it's not a valley, we need to decide which direction to move ahead in our binary search. Unlike the original leak code problem, this time we want to move in the direction where we have a neighbor whose value is lower than the current, not greater. Let's adjust our pointers. L is now going to be at M plus one. This means that these elements are no longer candidates to be a valley. The right pointer is gonna stay where it's at and M will be calculated to be at index four. Is this a valley? Why, yes it is. It's lower than both the right and the left neighbor. So for this, we're gonna go ahead and return index four and that is gonna be our answer. Do note that we have another valley here at index zero, but remember we only need to return one. The time complexity is going to be log n, and the space complexity is gonna be big O one, just like before. There are other variants, though more rare, but they all involve changing your equality checks. And on that note, let's write up the code. You'd be surprised how little changes we have to make. We have to change how we check for the valley, so we essentially just reverse our logic like so. Then lastly, when we choose which direction to go, we'll check if the right neighbor is strictly less than our current value at the middle index. And that's it. Thanks for coding with me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.